the male gonads are known as testes and testes serve very two important roles. Firstly, they play a role as a reproductive organ, so that means they produce specialized types of cells known as sperm cells that are involved in our human reproduction cycle. And secondly, testes also play a role as an endocrine gland, and that means they are capable of releasing and producing specialized hormones that are required by our body. Now, in this lecture, we're going to focus on the latter. We're going to focus on the endocrine capability of testes. Now, if, it ta if we take a cross-section of the testes, we basically get the following diagram. And within this diagram, we have a specialized section known as the seminiferous tubules. And this is what we're going to focus on in this lecture. So these tubules shown in brown are the seminiferous tubules and if we examine the microscopic section of the seminiferous tubules, we basically get the following diagram. So within our seminiferous tubules, we have two very important types of cells that are involved in sperm production as well as in the production of our androgens, the male sex hormones. So we have Sertoli cells, which are these large cells shown that contain the blue nuclei as shown. And connecting these Sertoli cells are the intercellular junctions, the tight junctions, which basically create a watertight seal. Now, below our Sertoli cells, what keeps our Sertoli cells together and attached to a membrane is this basement membrane layer. And below that, we have these fibroblasts, which are special, uh, specialized types of cells that produce and release collagen that forms the extracellular matrix that surrounds our cells. Now, the other important types of cell that we have to know is our Leydig cell. This is also known as the interstitial cell, and these Leydig cells are shown in green. So we have the Leydig cells, we have the Sertoli cells, and we also have these red structures, which are the capillaries that bring not only nutrients and oxygen, but also important types of hormones to our testes, to our seminiferous tubules of the testes. So in our discussion on the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary gland, we said that the hypothalamus produces and releases a hormone known as GN, uh, GNRH, which stands for gonadotropin releasing hormone. And this hormone stimulates the anterior pituitary gland to release two important types of hormones. We have the follicle stimulating hormone FSH and luteinizing hormone also known as LH. Now, when the luteinizing hormone is released into our bloodstream, it travels down to the capillaries of our seminiferous tubules and it attaches to the cell membrane of these Leydig cells and it basically stimulates these Leydig cells to release a special type of androgen known as testosterone. Now, testosterone is a steroid hormone and that means it, it, it is lipid soluble and it can easily pass across the cell membrane of target cells. So the receptor proteins of testosterone are found inside our cell. Now, testosterone has many important functions. Firstly, it basically stimulates and initiates the production of our sperm cells inside these regions between our uh, Sertoli cells. And we'll discuss what the function of Sertoli cells are in just a moment. Now, it also causes, it initiates secondary sex characteristics, including the growth of pubic hair, as well as under armpit hair, and it also enlarges our larynx, and that is what gives us a deeper voice when we're undergoing puberty. Now, it also is responsible for initiating the process of puberty, so basically our growth spurt. This involves the growth of not only our muscle, but also of bone. So it increases the bone and muscle mass in our body during the process of puberty. 
Now, it is also involved in actually preventing a condition known as osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is, a, is essentially the breakdown of our bone, our bone matrix, as a result of old age. And it also stimulates the closure of our epiphyseal plate found in our long bone. So it's not only involved in actually elongating our bone, but it is also involved in ending the process of elongation in our long bones. Now, as time progresses, and as our Leydig cells continually release the t uh, our testosterone into our blood, that increases the level of testosterone in our blood. And as the blood testosterone level increases, the testosterone can actually go and inhibit the hypothalamus from releasing the gonadotropin releasing hormone. And it can also inhibit the anterior pituitary gland from releasing our luteinizing hormone as well as the follicle stimulating hormone and this type of pathway is known as negative feedback inhibition or negative uh, feedback mechanism. Now what about our follicle stimulating hormone and what about the Sertoli cells? Well, the Sertoli cells are these cells shown here. Now, once the follicle stimulating hormone is released into our bloodstream, it travels to the capillaries of this region and it causes these uh, Sertoli cells to basically provide the nutrients needed to our sperm cells for them to actually develop into mature sperm cells. So in males, the follicle stimulating hormone stimulates the Sertoli cells to provide nutrients to the developing sperm cells. Now, as time progresses, what our Sertoli cells can do is they can basically release a glycoprotein hormone into our surrounding area, into our bloodstream, known as inhibin. And what inhibin does is it goes into our bloodstream and it travels to our anterior pituitary gland and it basically inhibits via a negative feedback loop, it inhibits the release of our follicle stimulating hormone from the anterior pituitary gland. So to review what we just discussed, let's take a look at the following flow chart. So let's begin with our hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus produces a hormone known as GnRH, the gonadotropin releasing hormone, which then travels to the anterior pituitary gland through the hypothesial portal system. And once it attaches to the endocrine cells in the anterior pituitary gland, it causes those endocrine cells to release the follicle stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone. Now the luteinizing hormone travels through our bloodstream and eventually attaches onto our Leydig cells and it stimulates those Leydig cells to release testosterone. At the same time, the follicle stimulating hormone attaches onto our Sertoli cells and it causes these cells to basically provide the nutrients to our developing sperm cells while testosterone actually initiates the development of our sperm cells into mature sperm cells. At the same time, testosterone also causes these other different, uh, um, th uh, these other different effects. So, for example, it's responsible for actually creating that growth spurt. It's responsible for giving us our secondary characteristics such as our enlarged larynx, a deep voice, our pubic hair, and other things of that nature. Now, when our concentration of testosterone is very high, it can basically travel back into our hypothalamus and inhibit the release of GnRH. It can also inhibit the release of F, uh, FSH and LH from the anterior pituitary, while the Sertoli cells can basically create a protein hormone known as inhibin that goes on and negatively inhibits the release of FSH from our anterior pituitary glands.